video, I will be sharing how I plan my days, weeks and months with the analog part of my planning system. We will have a look at the flexible time blocking system, how I use the Pomodoro technique and also the 20-20-20 rule, my positive feedback system and some final notes on planning. It seems like a lot but we will tackle it all and I have already shared part 1 and part 2 of this video series where I showed you the other 50% of how I plan and schedule my day. So without a further ado, let's get started with the last and final part. To make a big of a quick recap of my digital planning system, I have a table in Notion where I have my tasks ranked in importance. I have one main task of the day which I give priority to, two goals and a column for other tasks. Lastly, I have a column for completed tasks where I migrate the tasks that I have already completed and that I'm done with, but my planning does not end there. I complement this table with something that allows me to be a bit more realistic and not over optimistic when planning. The reason for this is that when planning, I tend to overpack my days with a big list only to feel extremely disappointed once the day ends. How many times have you felt frustrated because it seems that you haven't done much in your day? Well, this can become a probable scenario for me if I do not use something to keep me down to earth. And that is why the analog part of my planning system is so useful for me. I call this part of the system flexible time blocking, but I know that it is also known as window blocking. Scheduling every single minute of my day does not work for me at all. It stresses me out and it makes me inflexible towards unexpected things that might happen. But at the same time, only having a to-do list makes me extremely optimistic and I end up believing that I can accomplish more than I actually can in a given day. So by having a bit of a reference of the actual hours that I can use in a day, I am able to plan a bit more realistically. For this, I use blocks of time where I focus on specific tasks. I combine this with the Pomodoro technique, which is 25 minutes of work and 5 minutes of rest time. Once I complete one Pomodoro, I make a little asterisk in my page and I try to complete as many Pomodoros as possible within that window of time. Note that I do not always completely finish the task, but I make sure to make progress in it. For instance, on this particular day, I wanted to read and summarize three chapters. They were long and full of information, so I could only manage to finish two of them. And if I hadn't written down the little asterisks that show me how much I have worked on the task, I would have probably felt disappointed because since it is not completed, I cannot cross out the task entirely. Instead, I feel great because I know that I have focused for many Pomodoros and that I have done my best. I feel that time blocking allows me to be more conscious about the time that I actually do have to do things. Bear in mind that you must adjust this to your personal circumstance. For instance, if you work, let's say, a 9 to 5 or a 9 to 6 job, or you have online classes, or maybe you have courses that are at specific times during your week, just mark that time out of your planner. In this way, you can be a lot more realistic about the time that you have in a day and what you can actually accomplish in it. For instance, I might be starting a remote full-time job in a company and if I do so, I will mark all of the working hours so as to have a realistic look at what my week looks like. And the system will be pretty much the same, but I will just have a lot less time. Being over-optimistic when planning and being unrealistic about the actual time that it takes to complete things has been one of the most disappointing things for me. Because at the end of the day, if I overpack my to-do list and I see a lot of incomplete things, I feel just like a big failure. So instead, I like to count the little asterisks that equal 25 minutes and I can write down how much time I have worked for. And I really like the feeling of reward that I get by doing this. Now, in my opinion, it is good to have a daily, a weekly, and also a monthly planning scheme. And for daily things, I use both Notion and my paper space. For weekly goals and chores, I have a separate column in Notion. And for the monthly things, I have my agenda on this simple paper calendar, which allows me to have a glance at the whole month. Now, this really helps me to have a better idea of how many days I have left until certain important dates.
having a calendar helps me to schedule things in advance. And I have marked the days in which I have to give in the assignments for my course so that I am aware of them and I can calmly work on them before they become urgent and important tasks. Which, once again, is what we try to avoid. For this, you could also totally use something digital such as Google Calendar, but I use the agenda because I happen to have it, but I would probably just use Google Calendars or a monthly calendar in a page instead. It is important to have in mind when you actually have important things coming up to be able to prepare in advance and reduce stress. You can draw a super simple calendar and have it within hand's reach. You can also cross each day to have an accurate idea of the days left until your next assignment, test or maybe important work-related thing that you have. For the convenience, I use the 25 minutes, 5 minute rest Pomodoro with an online timer called Tomato Timer or Tomato Timer. And this might be a bit weird, but I have been quite concerned about the health of my eyes. I have heard a specialist recommending the 20 20 20 rule. So basically, every 20 minutes, you should try to stare at something that is at least 20 meters away from you for 20 seconds. So that is why it is a 20 20 rule. Because our eyes get irritated when we look at things too close from us, and they rest when we are staring at things that are far away. Moreover, when staring at screens, we diminish the amount of times that we blink per minute, so our eyes get dry. So, on every pause, I try to follow the 20-20-20 rule. And if possible, I also try to stand up for some movement and stretch a bit. And in the pause, I might fetch a cup of tea, I might go to the toilet, I might walk a bit, play with my dog, or I might actually do absolutely nothing. And then the Pomodoro starts again and it is time to go back to work. Another thing that I use in my planning system is positive feedback and reward. So in my digital planning table, there is a column for completed tasks where I migrate all of the tasks that I have completed. And at the end of the day, it is extremely rewarding to see what I have managed to accomplish. So if I have tasks that I haven't completed and that are still relevant, I just put them back in the weekly goal list. I like this because if I don't see what I have accomplished, my perfectionist mind tends to think that I am one irresponsible person that is not able to accomplish or do anything. So the other thing that really motivates me is to write down the little asterisks that I have mentioned when I complete the 25 minute Pomodoro. So I really love to go back to my agenda and see how much I have been able to study or to work for on a given day. And it is just helping me to change my mentality around my own productivity and to see that I do put a lot of effort and work into things. Sometimes I cannot cross out a task in the list because I still need to work on it on the next day but I know that I did my best that day and it is enough for me. This is a time for me to make a small reflection of the day, have a look at what worked, the progress that I did, if I got distracted, if I can change anything or improve it and so on. And also I generally plan things in the night so that I don't waste any time in the next morning and once I wake up I can just start working right away. Lastly, some final notes. Remember the most important thing. You can have the best, most efficient time planning method and still not accomplish much at all. Because the planning system is important, but it is more important to get into action. So don't spend all of your time trying to maximize efficiency instead of actually doing the things that you have to do. In my experience, I have lost countless hours designing perfect time scheduling plans, which was an actual way for me to procrastinate. So instead, I'm trying to focus less on the system and focus more on the doing. It sounds simple, but it is easier said than done, especially if you are like me and you like to imagine scenarios and plans and efficient systems and stuff like that. So if you work a bit every day on the things that matter to you, they will add up as compound interest. Even if it seems that you're not doing much on a particular day, the sum of the efforts of all the week will actually make something. And this is one of the best lessons that I learned with the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, which I must always recommend.
Now note number two. Can you have the complete planning system in the digital format or vice versa, everything in paper? Of course you can. I personally prefer the flexibility of the digital part and the accessibility of the paper part. I really like the combination, it kind of feels really enjoyable for me and it works well. And also you can write things down in pencil for maximum tidiness and flexibility in case you need to change things in your weekly plan. Because if you remember video number one of this video series, things will happen, unexpected things will pop up and you will have to be flexible and adjust your plans as you go. I also feel that there are several ways in which you can make your time blocking schedule. There's no need for you to get any fancy agenda or anything like that. I actually happen to have this one with timed columns because it was given to my mother as advertising. So probably I will be painting the cover soon because it is just an agenda that was given as a free gift. But you can use any paper sheet and put the hours of the day instead. Or another way that I like to use this is by just writing down the periods of time in which you want to do something and putting the asterisk next to that. There are some days in which I like to plan in the agenda with every single hour of the day, while others I grab a simple notebook and make a list, so it really just depends on my mood. I really hope you liked this video and I feel that I might have made the system look complicated but actually it is super super simple. So please tell me if you do anything similar or if you think that you could try out any of this. I love to read you in the comment section and it always makes me happy to read how you're doing and all of the lovely comments that you leave. Also remember that there is part one to this planning series where I have shared the three main principles that helped me to plan my day and part two where I have dived deep in the digital planning part of my planning system. Those videos really complement this one so make sure to watch them and I will have a link down below for them or you can just click in the card in the right top corner. So if you liked the video, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell because if not, YouTube might not tell you about my upcoming videos. And also you can follow me on Instagram where I like to share some snippets of my life and also some daily reflections and that is just a fun space where you can find me at. And lastly, if you want to make a contribution to my content to help me keep creating, you can become a Patreon friend. And there is a small donation fee which goes to what I call my tip jar that basically helps me to keep creating and to make more videos. Okay, my friends, I'm really glad to say that this little video series is done and I'll see you next time. So please stay simple. Thank you.